to commemorate the upcoming 30th anniversary of Doom 2 this year, Bethesda released a brand new port of the first two Doom games at the start of QuakeCon 2024. Titled Doom Plus Doom 2, this latest re-release, which is practically a re-re-re-release, was handled by Night Dive Studios and includes every commercial Doom episode alongside a slew of extras. The most enticing prospect here is not the ridiculously impressive performance, which runs at a locked 120 FPS on Xbox Series consoles and PlayStation 5, nor the mod menu, which allows custom mods to be uploaded and installed by users with just a few clicks, but the first official new Doom level since the 2010 port of Doom 2 on Xbox 360. This new set of levels, titled Legacy of Rust, were co-created by id Software, Night Dive Studios, and Machine Games. The latter two have collaborated on the past on modern ports of Quake and Quake 2, not only sprucing up those games for next generation hardware, but including new levels alongside them, so expectations were understandably high. The end result is maybe a little disappointing, but still a solid collection of maps that pushes Doom's challenge to the maximum without going overboard. So what does this new port of Doom represent? In a lot of ways, this is a comprehensive look back at the legacy of a game that is often cited as the father of the FPS genre. Doom was so monumentally important to the games industry in 1993 that practically everything in the wake of it has been influenced by it. Outside of Nintendo classics, I can't think of any other singular title that has touched as many generations of players and designers in the same way, save for possibly Metal Gear Solid or even Resident Evil. Not content to include nearly 150 single-player levels, Night Dive Studios has dug into the archives of Doom's development and included a museum of sorts to browse through. Here you'll find old sprites, early designs, concept art, and other fun tidbits that shed light on what the original developers at its software created. It's the type of bonus feature content that is sorely missing from most re-releases and remakes, even if I do wish some of the beta versions of Doom were playable. For console players, this is also the closest they've come to having the original PC experience on non-PC hardware. As is typical with Night Dive's other games, full keyboard and mouse support is included on every platform, and it's transformative for anyone who has never experienced Doom in its original format. Even on Nintendo Switch, you could simply plug in a USB keyboard and mouse and be off to the races. Full input rebinding is available, and with crossplay enabled on every version, the only thing separating the Switch version from its brethren are limitations on resolution and frame rate, understandably. I suppose the mod menu is also restricted on Nintendo's platform, but that's likely down to adult content concerns from Nintendo. On next generation platforms, it's maybe silly to be so happy about a 30 year old game utilizing all of the bells and whistles, but it's amazing to see a game running at 4K 120 FPS. This has never been a problem on PC, what with a myriad of different source ports, but it's nice that console players aren't being left out in the cold. The previous Unity ports for Doom were good, but Night Dive's latest goes beyond excellence to deliver near perfection. That's not to say there aren't some issues present. As is typical of the Kex engine that powers all of Night Dive's remasters, Doom plus Doom 2 does have audio issues. Sometimes the MIDI soundtrack won't play at the right volume, and the pitches of certain sound effects are either wrong or get muffled out. I've even noticed spots where I will bounce off walls due to how Kex is interpreting the original WAD data resulting in my character getting shunted right back into enemy fire despite me taking cover. I even swear that some of the enemy damage models aren't entirely accurate, as I don't remember Kako Demons being so weak, nor do I remember Barons of Hell dealing out such fierce punishment. Still, on PC, you don't have to bother with those inaccuracies. While this latest port is super convenient and is quickly becoming my preferred way to replay Doom, Bethesda hasn't locked out all of the data from this version. If you can't live without free aim or simply prefer the options GZ, Doom, and other source sports offer, you can take the WAD data from the latest re-release and use it wherever. Even mod support, which was first thought to be limited to the in-game mod menu, is as simple as creating a folder in the game's directory, dropping the WAD file into it, and plugging in some command lines in a text file. You do get locked out of GZ, Doom specific mods, but anything Boom compatible is a go. The visuals may not be GPU accelerated, but the accurate emulation of Doom's original software rendering is outstanding. For my money, that aspect is actually more accurate than GZ Doom, which I always preferred to play in OpenGL since software rendering didn't quite look like how I remembered it. Night Dive has implemented multi-core rendering to split up the workload and push frame rates beyond the original game's 35 FPS on each platform. 
It's an ingenious way to distribute the load and make use of modern technology. But what does all of this have to do with Doom's legacy? I've always been a purist when it comes to this series, as I prefer the original Doom and Doom 2 over its sequels. Doom Eternal might be the closest modern id software has come to recapturing that specific sense of resource management that old school id achieved, but it's also a lot stricter when it comes to which enemies require which guns. Classic Doom just feels timeless, even if its design is a bit simplistic. That simplicity gets put on full display here, showing just how much life you can get out of considered gameplay design when you couple it with solid level design. It's easy to point at the original games now and say, these levels kinda suck, but the beauty of Doom plus Doom 2 is that you aren't limited to those antiquated maps. Id Software were geniuses when it came to technology, but no one could have predicted where 3D game design was going. Those original maps, of which Doom's first episode is still magnificent, are limited in scope not because the designers were bad, but because the nature of running a business means you can't endlessly iterate on a concept until you perfect it. Id Software needed to create Quake in 1996 to keep the money flowing in, and that necessitated changing technology and moving away from Doom. With full mod support though, even console players can now see just how engrossing classic Doom can be. For my money, the 2010 episode No Rest for the Living is the best commercial Doom episode out there, but Legacy of Rust is also a quality experience. Both still have nothing on the likes of mods such as Aliens Eradication, Back to Saturn X, Eve Eternity, and Doom Zero. Bethesda maintains a list of official add-ons, but since you can upload basically anything, the possibilities are practically endless for this new port. I haven't even brought up the remixed soundtrack by Andrew Holschel, who is practically becoming the master of retro boomer shooter music. Many years ago, Holschult released a project titled IDKFA that remixed the entirety of Doom 1's soundtrack as a demo reel of sorts. That album is the reason he eventually was brought on to compose Dusk's soundtrack, kicking off a string of amazing work that would culminate in him composing tracks for Doom Eternal's DLC. Now, IDKFA is an official part of Classic Doom, and Holschult was able to finish his follow-up project that encompassed Doom 2's soundtrack. It certainly creates a different vibe for the classic games, and while I don't prefer it over the originals, that has more to do with me having played Doom since I was 7 years old. More than any of this, I think this latest port of these classic games represents how Bethesda is still paying respect to the Doom franchise. While the company manages to continually shoot itself in the foot with its in-house games, and especially with the closure of Arcane Studios, RIP, it has managed to do right by its software. Not only has Wolfenstein made a comeback with solid reinterpretations from machine games, but Doom stands as possibly the best modern FPS game around. It would be easy for Bethesda to milk the hell out of new Doom and completely redo the original in the same style, but it instead shows the path of preservation. Maybe some younger players won't understand the appeal of classic Doom, but I would rather that these games be available everywhere in their original form instead of locked to older hardware and lost to time. Whether or not the upcoming Doom the Dark Ages can live up to this legacy is irrelevant for me. Bethesda and id Software can completely fumble that next game, and I'll still be a happy camper as classic Doom is alive and well in 2024. Even the Quake series has received some love in recent years, which gives me hope that a new installment is brewing in the background. As the title of this video states, the legacy of Doom is eternal, and I'm grateful that the industry hasn't forgotten it.